We're about to redo the 2 and R of the 2014 TOC between Jessica Levy and Danny. Unfortunately, the video we made yesterday on the entire round with our comments got deleted. But in essence, the 2 and R is going to make the following changes. Jessica's 2 and R originally spends about 3 minutes and 30 seconds on the theory debate and about 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the case debate. This 2NR is going to look drastically different. The 1AC makes arguments why theory is an RBI, and the 1AR sort of contradicts itself and reads one not really well developed argument for why theory is not an RBI. The 2NR is going to press the app on this contradiction and going to is going to establish that if theory is a reason that neg should lose, it's also an RBI given the 1AC arguments. Additionally, the 2NR is going to devote more time to the paradigm issues between reasonability and competing interps, which is something the 2AR took a lot of advantage of in this round. And it's also going to devote more time to the reject argument versus reject debater question. Now, what's interesting here is that normally you wouldn't go for reject the argument versus reject the debater and also the RBI, because if you change the status of the punishment from reject the debater to reject the argument, presumably all the reasons why theory is an RBI no longer stand. Theory can't be a reverse voting issue if it's not a voting issue in the first place. However, in this round, that works out okay for the negative, because if theories reject the argument and you get the RBI, the original argument that would be rejected would be Jessica's NC framework. And so, similarly, the reciprocal punishment for reading frivolous theory would be to reject the AC framework. And this works out well for Jessica because Danny doesn't put any link terms on the NC, meaning that Jessica can just extend case offense and win on substance. The last thing that Jessica is going to do is she's going to give an explicit, or I guess Kirk is going to do, that Jessica should have done, is Kirk is going to give an explicit education versus fairness debate that was lacking in that 2NR. This is important because the majority of Jessica's advantages on the counter interp link back to education, not fairness. This means that the 2AR now has several layers to fight through if it wants to win on the theory debate. First, it has to resolve the question of whether it's reject the argument versus reject the debater. Second, it needs to resolve the paradigm issue of competing interps versus reasonability, or win underneath reasonability, which would be pretty hard given that Jessica is making some pretty good arguments about why the neg does give turn ground to the AF. Or, uh, and the next layer that the neg would, AF would need to fight through in the 2AR is presumably the education versus fairness arguments, because the entirety of the AF's theory shell in the 1AR was fairness based. The, Important thing to note here is that the 2AR could potentially drop the RBI arguments if it goes all in on theory, because if it loses the theory debate, then it loses the round anyways, so it doesn't really matter if it concedes that theory is an RBI. The RBI is much more important in this debate for the negative than it is for the affirmative, because if the negative doesn't get access to the RBI, it also needs to win the substantive debate, which is what Jessica did in this round. So go watch the video and listen to this recording again, and it'll make a lot of sense what we're talking about. And I'm ready whenever you are, Kirk. Alright. I'm gonna start with drop the argument. Okay. Ready? Yeah. You should drop the argument that A sub points intervention. All judges have biases. I would drop the debater supercharges those biases by making the entire round decided on those biases. That always your justification for drop the debater. Even if you have to fight a slight slight uphill battle, it doesn't matter if the judge is out to get you, it's going to vote against you. A sub point is proportionality. If I'm only making one argument that's unfair, you should only punish me for that argument that's unfair. Not all the arguments are making proportionality key to fairness because in church I'm receiving just and fair punishment. Your first argument and we'll drop the debater is time to cover one does not apply in this instance because I'm a bit, because we reject the argument means rejecting my entire NC. I'm not putting any turns on the AC, which is that the NC is my only way out. There's significant compensation if you drop the argument. Second, I'm spending enough time in the issue. It's not a skew, and three times skew is inevitable. All arguments are designed to skew time. Some debaters are simply faster than others. Your next argument's a uh, defense, and I won't go to that. You're gonna uh, go on the RBI debate. One, you, you should give me an RBI because the 1AC said there was RBIs, while the 1AR said there was no RBIs. You should default to the 1AC interpretation because my 1AC strategy was predicated on the 1AC concessions and also the 1AC paradigmatic issues. There are two implications. The AC point that he's simply contradicting himself, which means that you should automatically vote him down, or the B sub points that you can simply give me an RBI. Second is reciprocity. If you don't, uh, if theory is an RBI, that means there's no risk issue for him. I, uh, while it's a nip for me, I have to win both theory and substance. While only he only has to win theory, that's not a reciprocity. Key to fairness because the church both debaters 
Raiders have equal chance at, uh, at executing the battle on time two. Uh, on time two, cross ties above RB on time two. Also, turn the theory on RBI. I cause significant time two for uh, time, time two for me because I had to win both theory. Uh, all the time I was spent on theory doesn't matter because I also had to win on substance on competing education. The default to reach in my bright line for reasonability is uh, structural abuse. That's defined in terms of the number of features and number of apps. For example, Nibs would violate this because it gets a two to uh, it gets a two to one advantage. Not solved your arc training is claimed because I give a bright line. Also, prefer reasonability because we uh, the uh, competing education leads to a race to the top. If I'm already being fair, there's always something fair that I could have done. Uh, uh, the fair I could have done, which means that uh, I'm being punished for something that I could do and so something that uh, something I'm doing. But that's key to fairness because I shall only be punished for the practices I'm actually doing in this round. Education always fairness. The ace points I always on uh, the ace points I always on duration because education influences the outside around fairness only influences within this round. The piece points that terminal impact of fairness is to uh, is to win the debate round. Uh, is is to win. However, we really want to win. We were just buy ourselves really big TOC trophies. Clearly, there's some other purpose to education. Also, it may, it may sound strange. I'm making both reject the argument and RBI arguments. However, it's perfect. Uh, it's perfectly fine in this instance because uh, because reject the uh, because reject the argument means that you have to reject the uh, reject the NC or AC advocacy. We're not making turns on each other advocacy, which means I reject. Uh, which means that the uh, which means that the punishment for reject the argument which you, uh, would be to reject my NC. However, the reciprocal punishment or what the RBI would give me is to reject the AC. That's two forty four. Perfect. Okay, I think the biggest mistake here is on the race to the top argument. The impacting for why being marginally more fair is a bad thing is circular. Oh, like sure, you yeah. say that this is key to fairness because I should be voted for what I have done, the practices uh, I do yeah. do, yeah. right? But that sort of begs the question as to why. Um, so you need some sort of external impacting here. So the common argument here is substantive education. Um, people say that you know race to the top bad because everyone's trying to find the marginally less abusive, like trying to figure out how your case is marginally more abusive, and that kills substantive education because we never get around to talking about the topic. Instead, we're just concerned about could the app have been slightly more fair, um, right? That's the A point. I think the B point here can be theoretical norm development. That like theory norm development is killed when we're focused on the marginal cases as opposed to significant portions of abuse because it breeds resentment within judges and they stop evaluating theory debates properly. And in addition, it distracts debaters from the actual like meat of the theory debate, which should be actually abusive cases, not marginally abusive cases. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So those are arguments that need to be externally impacted in terms of why race at the top is bad. I think also there needs to be a more clear transition between the paradigm issues. Uh -huh. um, like, I know what's happening because we have planned this redo out together, but somebody who's just flowing this, especially a judge, is probably going to be pretty confused about how the transitions happen. So the transition can happen either via a pause for a second, or you can say, next paradigm issue is the RVI. 1AC and 1AR are contradictory on this issue. 1AC says RVI, and the NC strategy is predicated on that. That's why I didn't read theory, because I knew that if you read it in the 1AR, I could sit on it in the 2NR and punish him. The 1AR reads contradictory arguments on the RVI. Two impacts, A point is 1AR is arguing against itself in the 1AC, which puts me in an awful position, because I don't know what the app actually advocates until the 2AR vote him down for reading contradictory arguments. B point is give me the RVI, because I conceded to the 1AC arguments, which means that the 1AR shouldn't be able to beat back its own arguments I conceded to sure or something like that right and then regardless the only justification he has for not no RBI is time skew but you can turn that RBI is actually rectify the time skew because they ensure that the 2NR is not sitting for too long on an issue it won't get any sort of benefit from the 2AR can collapse to either substance or theory in a world without the RBI this ensures that the 2AR uh, needs to actually go for the theory debate next issue is fairness versus education or something like that or next issue is competing in terms okay Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Cool. Um, now, the other thing to note here, Kirk, that's uh -huh. really important strategically, is if you're going to read, re drop the argument, you have correctly pointed out at the end of your speech that in this round, drop the argument would functionally be the same as drop the debater. Right. Right? And so, on substance, if you are going to read, drop the argument, you presumably want to try to go for the off case that Jessica read right, exactly. as terminal defense on the AC. Sure. So that way, Danny can't just stand up in the 2AR, answer the RVI stuff, then go to substance, and try to win case. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And Danny would have a tough time doing that. He would have to really leverage the last argument he made in the 1AR against the NC framework, which is that his app, his app hijinks the link 
hijacks the link into constitutivism um, because Danny doesn't give himself any offense on the NC. Right. That's sort of the point of his theory shell. Yeah. Cool? Okay, any questions? No, I'm good. Just give me a second to 